Hi everyone, welcome to Bytes and Bolts, where tech and DIY converge. My name is Darren, and today we're going to be discussing my Pencil Pie RetroPie system. Today's video will be short, as this is a simple system with minimal components. If you're looking to build a system like this that requires minimal skill and won't break the bank, this is a great project for you. The goal of these videos is to demonstrate that creating something like this doesn't require a kit and you have the flexibility to adjust your design based on several factors budget, skills, preference, and personal flair. Today I'll be going over several aspects of the build including the components used for the build, materials needed to create a more finished look, the general cost that building a system like this can run, changes and improvements I've made along the way as well as additional improvements that I see are needed. So let's go ahead and dig in. Before we go over the build, here's a quick video showcasing my current setup. Okay, getting into the build process, let's start with the case. This is a Vaults branded pencil case and was originally purchased from Walmart. There are a number of colors or theme designs that can be selected from. I believe these can be purchased from other online retailers, but I'll just link one of the cases from the Walmart website as a reference in the video description. Let's move on to the brains of this system. I originally had a Raspberry Pi Zero W installed, but have since upgraded to the more powerful but equally compact Raspberry Pi Zero Two. This board is nearly identical to the Zero W, but boasts a more powerful processor and upgraded wireless chips. The upgraded processing power puts the Zero Two on a performance level similar to the Pi Three B Plus, based on benchmarks and reviews I've seen from some re reputable YouTubers. I'll link those reviews in my video description. Moving on to the heart of this system, I originally had an Anchor 10,000 milliamp hour power pack installed. This allowed a very long runtime, somewhere in the four to six hour range. Not bad for a little system like this. When I worked on upgrading this system, I swapped this pack for a 5,000 milliamp hour 3.2 volt lithium ion battery and wired a voltage converter and charging chip to allow external charging through a USB micro B connector. We'll discuss this change more at the end of this video. For the screen, I have a WaveShare 7 inch IPS screen that utilizes a GPIO hat for the display signal. This does require modifying the system's config file to properly display. The screen comes with a link to these instructions and it's pretty easy to do. I have a few shots of how I mounted the screen and components inside the case and if you'd like a more detailed explanation on this technique I highly recommend you check out the video on my channel where I detailed building Pencil Pie's big brother, the Cased Retro Pie. Part 1 of this video details how I mount these screens in the cases. I hope to have a part two for that build uploaded soon, so please subscribe if interested. The final steps in this build required me to make some minor modifications to the case. The first mod was to mount 
a power switch in the front of the case to allow it to be powered without the need for inserting and removing power cables. The second mod involves the wireless Super Nintendo style controllers. I wanted to be able to magnetically snap the controllers on the side of the case so the system would look more uniform. I achieved this goal by gluing some strategically placed magnets within the base of the controllers and then gluing corresponding magnets to the exterior of the case. The end result is two controllers that connect magnetically on each side of the case for quick transport. It's fairly easy to knock these off, however, so this is only good for short transport distances. It's most likely not going to hold up being tossed into the bottom of a backpack and toted around. But if you're tossing this in a bag, there's really no need for the controllers to be attached to the case anyway. Okay, that's pretty much it for this build. If you gather all your components and plan out the build, it's perfectly feasible to build this in a day, barring any complications. And while I was able to take my original version and implement some useful improvements, we do need to discuss the battery improvement I made. When I went from a 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack to a 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack, I didn't account for the voltage change going from 5 volts to 7 volts. This resulted in a greatly reduced battery time. With the current battery pack, I'm lucky to get two hours of playtime. In the future, I probably plan on using a 3.7 volt battery pack going forward, but with a much higher milliamp hour rating. This will allow me to continue using the external charging port as it's not feasible with a phone battery pack. Another significant challenge with this build that I haven't discussed yet is the audio. Since the screen I use utilizes the GPIO pins via a hat, I was unable to utilize any GPIO pins to run audio. Since the Pi Zero form factor doesn't have an audio jack, I had no reasonable way of creating audio through the system itself. I had to get creative with passing audio via Bluetooth. I currently use a small puck speaker that I take with the system if I want external audio, or I can use my earbuds. I'll need to cover the steps I took to do this in another video, as it does require some technical expertise and some significant configuration changes to the RetroPie system itself. As far as the cost of this build, I estimate the cost to be around $150 for all the components to put this system together. This does not include any materials or tools that may be needed, so you may need to factor that in when planning a build like this. Overall, this should be a fairly budget build for creating a RetroPie system like this that you can take around anywhere. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if it inspired you to create something on your own similar to this, please leave a comment and let me know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for tuning in to Bites and Bolts. Until next time.